Hello everyone, Praveen here. In today's vlog, we will cover phase detection with hard caskets. So hard caskets is one of the oldest methods of object detection. The original paper was written in 2001 by Viola and Jones. The link to this paper is here in this notebook. For the people who want to access the notebook, the notebook is available in the details section at the uh, bottom of this video. So hard caskets are based on machine learning techniques. Uh, the model over here is an XML file which has been trained to detect one particular object. What we will do is we will demonstrate today face and eye detection with these pre-trained models uh, in this notebook. Okay. So in the first steps, what we're going to do is we're going to import the necessary libraries. If you have been following the series, you know the same using the same sort of libraries using NumPy, we're using CV2. Uh, we've done some basic setups to ensure that we are getting a good image. Now we get to the core of it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create separate classifiers for both the face and the eyes. We're going to do both. We're going to do face detection and eye detection. And we are going to create separate classifiers for both the same. The, our next step is we're going to load the files from our model directory. Now I have already downloaded the XML files uh, for for face detection and for eye detection. Uh, these models can be accessed on this link, which is given over here. I have, and you would see the available models, the pre-trained models, which are part of OpenCV. Uh, they are available over here. There are uh, different ones to take smiles, upper bodies, lower bodies, uh, full bodies, frontal faces, eyes, etc. So we're just going to do frontal faces and eyes today. So as I said, we have first created a class of, we have created a cascade classifier. And the next step, we are going to load the appropriate files, appropriate uh, model files into the cascade classifier. And uh, this is a nice, nice little uh, check which we ensure that the file is correct and uh, it has a correct format. If that's not the case, then this, it will, it will raise an error. The next step, we're going to read and pre-process our image. So the pro parts of uh, the reading, we, for reading, we're going to use IM read, the default function from OpenCV. Uh, the next, in the pre-processing, we have two steps. The first step is converting an image to grayscale. And in the second step, we are going to do equalization of the histograms. So we have covered histograms in a separate video in the series uh, please go through the series uh, to the videos on histograms in case you want to clear your doubts uh, the purpose we do in equalization is we try to improve the contrasts so for example in a face uh, like for example particularly in the eyes uh, you notice that there are clear sets of contrasts where the whites of the eyes are lighter than the pupils and are also lighter than the uh, length of the cheek etc so by highlighting the contrast, you can improve the accuracy of the detection. So now we have a model files, we have our image that's pre-processed and we just need to apply the, uh, the model on our image. And that is done by a, a function which is available in OpenCV called detect multiscale. Uh, now detect multiscale takes three parameters the image that needs to be processed and two parameters called scale factors and bend windows. Now, uh, what the scale factor does is that an object can be at different scales in an image. Like for example, a face, if a face is close to the camera, it's gonna be much larger. And if it's further away, it's gonna be smaller. So oh, the way a uh, casket classifier works or detect multi-scale works, is it's capable of detecting the same image at different, uh, at different scales. And so the way it does it, it builds a scale pyramid. So a pyramid of images where each image is of a, a smaller step by a certain factor. So in this particular case, you've chosen the scale factor to be 1.3. That basically means that uh, the scale, the factor is 30%. So 1.3 means it's 30%. If it was 1.1, it would be 10%. Uh, the next factor which we use is a concept of win windows, uh, min windows, 
so typically what a classifier does, a classifier will detect multiple windows around a face. So this parameter defines the minimum number of windows the classifier must detect uh, to finally declare that this detected object is there and it's positive. So these are sort of hyperparameters which you can tune to uh, for your particular set of images, depending the way it is. Uh, so what we now, when we apply the multi-scale uh, function, function multi-scale method, we get we get a set of proposals, and the proposals are saved in this uh, in this array called faces, and faces basically contain the proposal which basically has the coordinates of the box and a height width and the height. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're now going to draw ellipses. Or circles uh, with with the with uh, ellipses or circles. So we define the center, which would be somewhere in the middle where the nose is, and we also can define. So the, it's it's an ellipse. So we can have a separate x and y. It's not a radius, so we can have separate width and heights, and we are we are going to draw a circle around it. The next thing we'll do is we want to run the eye classifier. Now we're going to not run the eye classifier in the whole picture. What we're going to do is we're going to take the face proposal, okay, the face proposal and extract that image, crop the image. So that's what we have done here. We have cropped the image that was, that was the face proposal. And on this uh, cropped image or what's called the face region of interest, face ROI, we are going to apply the eye cascade. So similarly, the eye cascade will give us a bunch of proposals, and we can then draw uh, ellipses around that. So as you can see, we have drawn ellipses around here. And actually, for eyes, you've chosen to just draw a circle, and these, uh, and that's over here. The next thing we're going to do is, this sounds good, we're going to do video processing with hard caskets. So we'll show how to process a video with hard caskets. Uh, and what we're going to also do is we're also going to measure the performance of uh, hard caskets and video. And the performance metric for video is FPS, that's frames per second. That is how many frames does the hard casket classifier uh, process in a second. So our first steps is we're going to initialize the, the FPS counter. Uh, the FPS is available as a part of a package called IMUtils. In case you have not installed IMUtils on your, on your, on your um, machine, you would have to install it, which can be, the installation is easy. It can be done with PIP. And the first step we're going to do is we're going to start at the FPS counter. We're also you're going to initiate, if you want, you can also initialize a frame counter. And uh, we are also going to declare an output file. So we are going to write the, we're going to process it and we're going to save the output in a file called output.mp4. That's, you can do it this way. Uh, so next we're going to do is we are going to read the input image and we can also calculate the total number of frames in that video. Uh, so we, there is, uh, we can create a video stream using an inbuilt CV2 function called video capture. And we can get the total number of frames in that video by using, again, inbuilt functions from CV2. We know that there are 528 frames in this video. So when you process videos, what we do is we again do the same. Each frame is processed as a separate image. And we can eventually stitch these frames together to create the final output video. So let's start here. So here we have chosen to just process the first 300 frames. Uh, you could have processed any number of frames as long as it's less than the total number of frames in the video, which is 528 in this case. And uh, so here is a function that reads one frame at a time. And we do the same steps. We are going to convert the frame to a grayscale image. We are going to then equalize the histograms to maximize improved contrast. And then we're going to apply the eye cascade. This is just going to apply I, the, uh, the eye cascade in this case. And uh, we are then going to draw, wherever we have real proposals, we are going to draw 
so we're going to draw ellipses around the eyes using similar functions which we have used when we are processing we are processing images uh, the last part we're going to do is we are actually going to write the output file to uh, write the each frame to an, the output file so that we can see the result and at the same time we are doing we are updating the fps counter so that we can check what kind of performance we get so i have run this the whole thing and i also have i have the video already downloaded so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to download the video and let's watch it so you can see here is the video and you can see the eyes are getting detected we see a few false detections which shows the inaccuracies but in general it's been able to detect the eyes where it is we notice a couple of more problems like if we notice is, is that if the eyes are not completely in the frame for example over here it gets it, it's unable to detect it so there are there, it's not a perfect model we see it's quite it can be quite uh, it, it can be inaccurate at times the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the net frames per second. So this, uh, so when you look at the frames per second for Cascade Classified, just to detect eyes, you get a frames per second of 9.508, which is quite decent for the hardware. We're not using a GPU, we're using a standard CPU. So 9.5 frames is not bad, it's actually quite good. So in case uh, but as you notice we're just detecting one item and there are a couple of inaccuracies uh, the accuracies are can be much higher if you use the uh, latest models using convolution neural networks but sometimes it can be slower so in certain cases uh, in certain cases cascade classifiers can be a decent alternative uh, in case you have very simple uh, if you have very simple detections to do and you are okay with the slightly lower accuracy. Thank you.